Okay, so how about one with an E? Okay, so we have different situations. They're going to have all different kinds of derivatives. Since we've talked about all those before, they're going to be kind of throwing all them uh, out to you just to make sure you remember how to do these kind of derivatives. All right, so the first thing on these problems is you want to find the derivative. Now, since I have an E here, that's E to the U, the derivative of E to the U is E to the U times U primed. So let's do that. I have e to the negative x squared times the derivative of the exponent. So I'm going to get for that one negative 2x. So I use a power rule on the exponent. The 2 comes down. I get negative 2x. So I get uh, e to the u times u primed. Okay, that's it. So now I have to check to see if this derivative is undefined anywhere. Let's rewrite that. Okay, I'm going to write this as a fraction, so that's the easiest way to tell if you've got something undefined if you're dividing by a zero. So we're going to do negative 2x on top. On the bottom I have e to the x squared. Now, you want to take a look at if the bottom could possibly be equal to zero. What we know about exponential functions is that these have horizontal asymptotes at zero, which means this is actually not ever going to equal zero. Now, if you're unsure about that, you could always take the bottom and try and set it equal to zero to see if you get something undefined. Now in order to solve something like this, you would have to take the natural log of both sides, but the problem there is you can't take the natural log of zero. So because of that, that shows that the bottom can never be equal to zero. So if the bottom is never equal to zero, that means there's, there's no place where this is going to be undefined. Okay, so we know that we're not going to find any critical numbers that way. The other way you find critical numbers is if you take this, set it equal to zero. So we're going to do zero equals negative two x over e to the x squared. To do this, we're going to cross multiply it. So if I multiply that, I get zero. So I get negative two x is going to equal zero. Divide both sides by negative two, and I'll get zero. So this right here, this would be the critical number, and in fact this is the only one that we have on this problem. The critical number is going to occur at zero. So now we're ready to make our table. I have x and I have f of x. Alright, so x, we're going to use the left endpoint. Okay, we start with negative 2. We're going to put our 0 in there, and we put our 1 in there. Okay, so again, by the way, let's suppose that this critical number was a number that was outside of our interval. Well, if that occurs, then that means all you would check is actually just the endpoints only. The critical number that you find has to be in our interval, which it is, so it fits on our table. Next, you're going to put all these values into the original one, and you're going to evaluate those here. And again, we can use decimals here so we can easily compare the results. And once we do that, we'll be able to tell what the absolute max and min is going to be. Okay, so let's do that. When we put that in here, uh, we're going to get, now I'll first start by putting in the exact value, negative 2, I'll get e to the negative 4. If I put a 0, e to the 0 is always going to be 1. And if I put 1 in there, then I'm going to get e to the negative 1. So the question is now, which one of these is going to be the highest value, which one's going to be the smallest value? Well, these here are going to involve 1 divided by something which means that this one's going to have to be the largest one. So the absolute max is 1. That's going to occur at x is equal to 0. So again, if you want to do decimals, you can, but you could also use exact values if you wanted to for this particular one. Now, let's take a look at both of these. Which one is going to be smaller? Well, the one that has the, the uh, most negative power, that's the one that's going to be the smallest one. So that means that the smallest one here, this is definitely going to be smaller than 1. So the absolute min is e to negative 4, and that's going to occur at x is equal to negative 2. So again, if you don't like comparing the actual values, you could also use decimals, but uh, this one is actually possible that you can compare it using the exact values.